are one of the best in the business. You're a Hall of Famer and at Sports Illustrated. Len, we have so many fantastic photos from you and the old Chiefs teams from your early days. We want to show you a couple of these photos and you can sort of walk us through what was going on uh, while these photos were snapped, all right? So you can take a look at the monitor. This is the first one for you. You were on the cover of Sports Illustrated and that was Super Bowl IV. Yes. Len Dawson Engineers, Super Chief Upset. Yes, and you can see, look at the headgear of the center. Yeah. Hollow, E.J. Hollow. Look at my headgear. <laughs> You like know, a kicker. I'm having a good day because <laughs> <laughs> his is all battered up and mine's clean and everything else. So uh, I remember that game very well, believe me. You remember from, you know, the plays and everything, what, what's the one memory that stands out the most? 65 toss power trap. The that's, crowd just sitting well, here yeah, with because you. That's, that's, that's when they built the, redid the building here, it's part of it. Because Glossa Richardson came in, we were inside the five yard line against Minnesota and Glossa Richardson come in with a play from Hank Stram. And he said, the coach wants 65 toss power trap. I said, are you sure? We haven't, we haven't practiced that, that, that play in three or four weeks. You sure? Yeah, 65 toss power trap. I said, you better be right. And he was right because Mike Garrett took the ball into the, untouched into the end zone. And that made it, I think, uh, let's see, it was, nine, it was uh, 16 to nothing or yeah. something like that. And with our defense, the game was over. Yeah, you guys were so ferocious back then. Mike Garrett was a Heisman Trophy winner. But speaking of Hank Stram, we have another photo of you shaking hands with your coach. This is before the game started. And we were just talking, you know, we see Hank Stram now on NFL Films and, and a lot of old footage. But what was he like? Bring him to life for us. Uh, he was a great guy, a great coach, great sense of humor. You know, he was one of my assistant coaches when I went to Purdue University. I've known him since I was 18 years old. And so uh, he was a very innovative guy. He's always was dingling and playing and all these plays that he wanted, you know, trying things like that. And uh, some of them every once in a while worked. Most of them really didn't, but that didn't stop him from trying. And so he was a, an, an innovative guy. And so, uh, and he loved coaching. And he loved the players and everything else. Yeah, I mean, you said you can't even compare him to a coach today. He doesn't remind, no, no. coaches today remind you of him. He's one of a kind. Uh, he was one of a kind. Yeah. Well, this is a one of a kind photo that we found of you, Len. This is one that you don't see every day. Um, this is you smoking a cigarette at halftime. Len, you remember that? That no. was at Super Bowl no, I. No, I don't. And it, I don't think that's a beer there between your legs. It couldn't have been, maybe a soda pop. It's fresca. The fresca. Uh, didn't know that was taken. I think that was the first Super Bowl at halftime. It was Super Bowl one. That was at halftime. Was that common to smoke at halftime of a game? Yes, it, uh, there a lot of a lot of people smoked back in those days. In fact, uh, there were there were coaches that, that smoked during the game. I know that when we came in here in 1972, the, the turf was synthetic tar, mm -hmm. and so uh, George Toma was the groundskeeper, and so he would be over on that that side because the head coach of San Diego smoked all the time. And so he put two big trash cans on each one at each end of the bench and he told him, don't you throw that thing on my, my turf. He said, I've got these for you. You put them in there. Unbelievable. And he stayed there with him, made sure that happened. 